Now you should be at marker number five, where there's a third kind of Franciscan rock on the uphill side of the trail. This is called shirt, and this is everybody's favorite. It's easiest to recognize, it looks like ribbons. It's actually called ribbon shirt. It's in layers that are usually a couple inches thick. It's an in-between very thin layers. The thick layers are actually composed of the recrystallized skeletons of microscopic sea creatures called radiolarians, trillions of them. The type of radiolarian that's in here lived in tropical water at the top. They make their skeletons out of silica. And when they die, those little skeletons settle down to the bottom of the ocean, 10,000 feet below. It's what Rachel Carson called the long snowfall of the sea. It takes a long time, one millimeter per thousand years to get down there. So they settle down there, they piled up over time, and when they get thick enough, they lithify, they recrystallize, and they form this rock called chert. If you have a really good hand lens, you break open a piece and spit on it, and you hold it up, you can see them sometimes. They look like little opaque pinheads. In between are layers of shale. That's why it's so crumbled. Well, this is that hard life. It probably came from 3,000 miles away, got scraped off to North America, and sometime later got pushed up 4,000 feet. Chert is also very hard. You could make knives out of it. The Native Americans here didn't just because they were so close to Napa that they traded for obsidian. This chert has a reddish cast, but Lavin says it comes in other colors too which often have to do with the chemical state of the iron in the rock. We'll see green shirt too. There's white shirt, there's black shirt, that was manganese from, that must have formed somewhere near those volcanoes, and yellow shirt. And do you have all those types of shirt? Yeah. yeah. Okay, now we know three kinds of Franciscan rock. Pillow basalt, gray wacky sandstone, and radiolarian shirt. How does that all fit into the big geologic story? So we've got the, that old Farallon plate moving at two inches per year towards North America, and now it's got two hitchers, hitchhikers on it. It's got the pillow basalt that picked up the plate spreading center, and now on top of that, it's got the radiolarian shirt, probably wishing that it had never stopped for hitchhikers. Well, about 100 million years goes by and the Farallon Plate starts to contact North America and be dragged underneath. That's another kind of plate boundary called a subduction zone or a conversion plate boundary. And a deep trench develops. And into that trench washes sand and silt and clay from the land. And that lithifies, that turns to rock. And the rock, all that material from land makes has got a, is called Greywacky Sandstone, one of the great names in geology. So now that Farallon place, just about ready to call it a day, it's picked up three rocks on its journey from the mid-Pacific, the pillow basalt, the radiolarian shirt, and the gray wacky sandstone. As it dives under North America, these rocks riding on top get scraped off and plastered onto the continent, building North America out from east to west. To visualize this, you may want to get out your Oreo cookie or at least imagine it, for an exercise Ken calls edible geology. You gotta warm up the cookie, you separate it, and now you have your two plates. Here, well, here's North America. This would be the Farallon plate riding in. It'll go faster than two inches per year. And as they collide, that Farallon plate is dragged underneath and all that frosting, that's the Franciscan riding on top, gets scraped off and plastered onto North America. So, it's the moral of the story is we're, we're all walking on frosting. Or the alternate view is it took 100 million years to get here at the speed your fingernails grow, so if you didn't cut your fingernails for 100 million years, they'd be 3,000 miles long. Now, let's move to stop number six, at the overlook with the benches.